All right, a uh, couple of housekeeping items here for fun things. If you're around tomorrow, there's a will be some fun research talks. So the assistant profs are going to go present about things they've done. Um, so this next one upcoming here is on estimating and contextualizing riders, emotions, and self-driving vehicles. Sure, that sounds interesting, I guess. Uh, and then seamless integration between design and analysis of structures using CAD and things. This one seems less interesting to me, but maybe it's interesting to you. Um, but they did say um, there'll be food. So if you're around tomorrow, two to three, um, get some free food, listen to some cool stuff that really smart people are doing, and should be fun. All right, um, Yahtzee was due today. How'd it go for everybody? Pretty good? I got one good. That's not, not the best news, but that's okay. Um, we'll get there. So this is week five. We're just cruising along. We're gonna finish out the object-oriented section here, and we'll talk about the next project. That'll be due on week seven. And we'll do some advanced topics those two weeks. And then we get a break, and then we come back for midterm. The midterm will be open book, open notes, open internet, because no one should memorize anything ever, because that's just a waste of your, your brain power. Um, I don't really like watching people take tests. I find that boring. If you'd like me to watch you take it, let me know and I'll show up. But my current plan is you just take it whenever you want and get it in by 314 and we're cool. Um, so usually that works well for people um, and then it's less stress. Um, so again, it's not, it, this is more of a, a checkpoint here. So we we've, we'll have cruised through all the cool stuff, C Sharp basics by this point. We'll do a quick little midterm on it. It's not designed to take an enormous amount of time. When I plan these things, I'm bad at planning because it's hard. Um, it's okay. Everybody takes a little bit of different amount of time to code. So my goal is that half of it's quiz questions and then there's like three long answer style write some code questions. Those ideally will take you like all together an hour and a half. So like 30 minutes a question. That means they take me like five to ten minutes per question and then I triple that and then some to see how long it'll take you. In case it's, I'm way off here, you've got double the time to do it. You'll have three hours to do it. And what I think might take an hour and a half, that will take me, you know, 20 minutes. So again, it's just an estimate. Um, it might be a little bit way off here. So they're meant to be not high stakes, just a checkpoint here. This is, we're checking in, see how things are going. If it feels good for the midterm, you should feel good about your progress, right? And, and the projects along the way. If the mid, you tank the midterm, the projects probably haven't gone very well for you either, and we should chat, see what's going on here. Uh, so that's our checkpoint here. Uh, you know, I don't plan on watching anyone take the test because it's terribly dull. If you'd like me to, I will show up. They pay me to show up, so I'm happy to sit and watch you take a test. Uh, I've offered this every year, and no one has ever taken me up on it. Don't just do it to mess with me, please. <laughs> um, but we've got that option. And then after that, we'll move into some cool stuff. This is database programming and data handling for two weeks. This is a super fun, special topic. Uh, we don't have a book for it. I just give a bunch of examples. There's tons of tutorials online for how to do this. Um, but working with data in databases is huge because literally all the data in the world is somewhere in a database, right? So we want to be able to interact with those in code without having to know a whole lot about databases and life just works. So you get some really cool tools in C Sharp to do this. Um, so we'll pick up the project after that on 3.14. So we won't have one over break. You'll get an actual break after you get this next coming project in. This will be project three we'll talk about tonight. We'll have two weeks for that, and then you'll get that one in. We'll finish up the advanced topics. We'll have a real break. You can do the midterm whenever. Right? We'll have some time, and then we'll come back, pick up databases, and then the end of March, which we're talking about already somehow, even though it's like early February, uh, we'll pick up the final unit, which will be our universal Windows platform, XAML programming, stuff we can run on Xbox. So we'll do some basic XAML stuff, uh, we already did like the quick little hello world demo so we can get into let's do more interesting stuff we can probably slide some of this up a little bit more and then we'll start on the final project so on 314 we'll have our last project of the individual project groups here um, and then on 328 we'll pick up the final project and then those will be presented by you folks i'll actually shut up for once um, on april 25th 6 30 p.m we'll just take turns presenting until we're done uh, usually takes somewhere around an hour 
Right? It, it's a, a little 2D Atari game clone, essentially. It takes you no more than five minutes to show us your functionality. We might have a question or two about the code. Um, people might say, yay. We'll vote for the best project. If you get the best project, your team gets an automatic A in the class, no matter what. But please don't bank on that and not do any other work. Because if you don't do any other work, the odds that your final project will be good are, are pretty low. Right? Let's, let's be honest. So um, we'll vote on that, see who the best team project is. They'll all get automatic A's in the class. Everyone else does pretty well. If you make it to them and present something, generally you do okay. That, that's usually how this works. Um, so that is the rest of your winter and the start of spring ahead for you. Yeah? So the winter and midterm, do we have to come to class? No. Okay. Please don't. Okay. I was just... You're welcome to, and I will sit and watch you. But. No, no, no need for that. And it'll be open all week long. So whenever you like to do tests. So it will be timed. Unfortunately, I, I'm supposed to time these things or so everyone gets the same amount of time because some of you have day jobs and some of you don't. So if you have a day job, you have much less time to put towards a midterm than someone who is just a full-time student. And that seems a little bit unfair. Although it'll be about three hours. Three hours. Yeah, the plan's for three hours um, for that. So that's when Canvas, once you hit start, it like doesn't let you do anything more after three hours. So. Um, that should be fine. I can make it a little longer if I need to. Uh, I'm not super concerned there. Um, but I, like, ideally it takes an hour and a half or less. And then we've got the three hours if you need it, and then uh, from there, you know, we'll go, we'll go from there. So um, hopefully you're getting to know each other. Again, the groups, usually we do three or four person groups for this. I like four person groups just because it's less groups then. Three is a pretty good number as well, um, and we're down to 43 people, so I think we could do groups of three if we wanted. That's still a small enough amount of teams. Um, we should be perfectly fine. Everyone can present and have no problem with that. So um, I do need to check on that Xbox. I haven't heard back from Ian yet, which is it's okay. I need to remember to bother him, uh, make sure it's working, because the one I carried here did not work very well. I hope I didn't break it by carrying it. That should be fine, right? I guess they're pretty old, though, so maybe you shouldn't jostle them. Uh, but there's one in the lab that did work, so we've got that one at least. Um, oh, speaking of the lab, if you want access to the game lab coming up soon, it's not super soon, but uh, coming up, there is a lab safety quiz you have to take. Um, safety quiz. Where is this here? Lab safety. Somewhere in here. Lab safety... Training. Is this the training? Yes, so you have to take this quiz here um, for the Comprehensive Laboratory Safety Training and then the quiz. Once you've completed the quiz, it emails you a PDF certificate that says, congratulations, you've completed the quiz. The problem is this is for the College of Engineering and Computer Science lab. Because we're in the College of Engineering and Computer Science, our game lab is considered a lab and you have to learn all about ha hazardous chemical handling because reasons. It's the exact same quiz. So sure, it, it's not hard. It'll just take you a little bit of time. But if you do that and complete the quiz and send it to me, I can get you access to the game lab so you can swipe your ID card or press it on the little reader there and get into the game lab as we move forward. So that way, if you want to play with the Xboxes specifically, we'll have access to do that. Because it's the universal Windows platform, it'll run on your PC, which is great. Uh, it will not run on Mac, unfortunately, but it'll run on your PC um, and then if you want to play with the controller, Xbox controllers actually do plug into computers, which is fun too. You don't have to do it on Xbox, but some of the sizing and how things look and, and show up there, um, there's a little bit of stuff I have to show you about. So I'll make sure I can get one working and bring it down here. Um, or we might take a field trip and maybe do class in the game lab. Um, we can't have more than 30 people in there, but given how many people actually show up live, that shouldn't be a problem. I'm not super concerned anymore, uh, which is cool. That's great. All right. So housekeeping is out of the way. Uh, we good to talk about Yahtzee and then some new stuff and then the next project? Okay. All right. No objections. That's a, oh, um, one last item. I forgot. And then we'll move on to stuff. Um, someone was asking me about some resources for extra practice or other things or other readings and, and whatever. Um, textbooks tend to be pretty dry. I'm not fond of most textbooks, but um, we've got this really cool database through the library. If you go to the S's here, it's uh, Skillsoft Books. They used to be called Books 24-7 or something else here. Uh, this is a super cool resource uh, that has tons and tons and tons of technology books. It's got other stuff too, but uh, the, the tech stuff is more fun here. Um, on just about anything you, you're interested in, and they're all free through the library here. 
Um, so if you wanted to look up something, uh, someone in my morning class asked me about uh, R programming. They said their stats prof wants them to use R but won't teach them R. And I was a little confused by that. But here we are. So go for it. So come here, search R programming, and like recent books, R all in one for dummies from 2023. So some of it's kind of old, like 2017 is probably not what you want to use for this. Um, but we've got some cool resources that are pretty early here. Our data analysis and easy steps, second edition, business like, and there's five pages of this. So um, pretty cool stuff, all free through the library. Uh, always happy to push library resources because the libraries are the unsung heroes of academia. Uh, we love our librarians. Do you know we have a College of Engineering and Computer Science librarian that specializes just for our college? Like how cool is that? So like she's very familiar with all the resources and databases and CIS engineering specific resources, which is really cool. So if you don't even know like where to go, what? How did this come up with our programming? Okay, sure. It's to help you uh, with your stress. Okay. When you're trying to learn R. Oh, here we go. Hololens and mixed reality headsets. This might actually be fun. We have a Hololens in the game lab that I got through a grant. Um, I was going to use for class, and it turns out it's kind of obnoxious to do that in class for demos and things because there's only one, um, and then it's like the headset, and you you only see if you're wearing it. Um, it's not as cool as those demos where like it you can see what they're seeing, um, which is really sad, but that's okay. You can't project it onto a screen. I didn't see a good way to do that, or maybe like my laptop because it didn't have two outputs or something wasn't working the right way. Um, but we have it if you want to play with it. It's in there. We got the little, uh, what is it, like a little animated dinosaur running around in your face. It was kind of fun. And you turn around, and you don't see it, and you turn around and it's back there. Like, augmented reality is kind of cool. Or mixed reality. Do they change the terms? What's the, the new iPhone thing? Vision Pro? Yeah, remember everyone's making fun of the Vision Pro? Like, hey, there's so many memes now for Vision Pro. I don't know if that one counts as a meme, but... Oh, here we go. Know your meme? Yeah, someone posted the video of him on the subway. <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah, this, this is the new funny thing. But augmented reality is pretty interesting, and the mixed reality stuff, uh, where it's not just the pure VR. Um, and then if you can see through the headset, you don't have to worry about using the camera to put the image back in your face. Um, but that's fun and all. Okay, anyway, should we move on? Let's talk about Yahtzee. Let's build a new form app here. Again, pretty is not, not required at all. Does not need to be pretty, that's okay. I'm sorry? <laughs> Making it pretty is the easy part? <laughs> See, what? The picture of the Kremlin in the background. Because my friend asked me to. He knows nothing about coding. He's an anthropology major. I was talking to him about coding, and he's like, you "Should put the Kremlin in the background." I'm like, "I can actually do that." And he said, "You should put Tetris music in." I'm like, "I can actually do that." So I decided to. Uh, do... Yeah, you you can go you can go nuts like having fun with it, which is the cool thing. Like, as much as we like to pretend programming is a science, it's an art. Right? The art of solving problems and taking difficult things and breaking them down into small enough steps that stupid computers can do them. There's science behind the scenes and all that fun, interesting stuff that happens, but the being a good programmer is an art. Being a good developer is really an art. You, you have to understand how to solve problems and use your tools and that sort of thing. <clears throat> all right, so we got a bunch of stuff we need to drag in here to build out our user interface, but we can do our classes first. Right? If we're following some good object-oriented design principles and thinking about what classes we need and what the classes should do, we can build all of our classes and business logic first and then wire it up to the UI. Right? If you build your UI first and then build your classes to fit that, they might not do exactly what you had planned to do. Right? We want to kind of think through and, and step through this process of what does it look like, what classes do I have, what methods do they need to have, what attributes are they going to have. Right, all that good design stuff. So we, we think about the nouns, the things that we're going to run into and interact with. We probably have dice. Right? There's probably the scorecard. I think we talked about that. And then maybe a player. Right? 
because we're going to have multiple players. So having player as a, as a class is going to help us have multiple players because all we need to do is say, okay, now this is the current player's turn. Now this is the current player's turn. And, this is a, and we could like loop through n number of players if we wanted. It right? saves us a little bit of time with this. Um, so let's start doing that. So let's build out here, um, add a new class. So let's build the Yahtzee dice first. Or generic dice rolling game dice. I don't, I don't know if I can actually use the word Yahtzee. Probably shouldn't be using the word Yahtzee. We're not going to sell this. It'll be okay. I, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So dice then, right? This is the collection of dice. We'll have five different die values that we're going to interact with, right? Because you have five different dice you can roll, and it'll know how many times they've been rolled. After three rolls, you can't roll your dice anymore, right? So every time we start a new round, we can set a new set of dice. We can roll them. We can see their values, and then we'll need to be able to hold our dice to say, "Don't roll this die, die when you roll," or "Do roll this die when you roll." Do, but not. sure. I, I think that makes sense, right? So thinking through what sort of stuff it's going to have. So we can have public int, I don't know, die one value, die one, die one value, I don't know, whatever we want to call it here, right? Um, with gets. Now sets are a little funny here. You probably don't want to be able to set these things directly, right? But Testing this is going to be tricky if I can't do this. So we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we, where we go. But um, for now, I'm going to leave it as a private set. And we'll see if it breaks when we, when we try and test it here. Right? Private set. Come on. Here we go. Die 3 value. Get private. Come on, pick up that private set. I'm complaining about having to type like one extra word when it's doing the rest of the work for me here. Private set. Die 5 value. There, now, we got, now I knew there was a private set. Okay. So we have our five dice here, right? When we have a set of dice, we might have a int for um, number of times rolled or something. Number of times rolled. Sure. With gets and again, probably don't want that to be publicly set. You shouldn't be able to change that directly. This should change when we use a roll function or roll method, right? That's the thing we want people to interact with is with roll. Roll should go and set these values and change this value. When we think about how we use this class, right? It should be protecting its attributes so you can't go and muck with them outside of my public functions, my public methods. So yeah, the number of time rolled. And then we probably need to know whether or not we should roll a die or not, or we should hold a die or not. So we can have a bunch of booleans for, I don't know, hold die one. Now this is probably fine to be a public set. We want this to be changeable here. You either hold it or you don't hold it. Right. Why don't you do init instead of set? Do what? Init instead of set. Init. So for set, you do init instead. Init. I don't actually know what this means. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I like guess suggesting it should be set. What would what, what is init? It's the exact same thing as uh, like a public set, but it's more of like a friend set in a sense. So whenever you're using it, only the classes that actually are calling the specific thing will use it instead. Okay. We can but try it. saying do set, I would just do It's suggesting we do set, but that's based on recent edits. Like it's saying, hey, you've done a bunch of other sets. You probably want this one to be a set. Yeah. Um, Knit versus set. Here's our init. Oh my goodness, that's too big. Non essential, non required, optional values do not need to be validated. Slightly easier to initialize. Required members, don't do that. Huh. Interesting. This person doesn't like them. I don't know. Bar set init. The only time it property can be set. Okay, so this is like a, almost a read only, looks like, right? Yeah. So we want this to be able to change back and forth as we're using the dice. So we don't want it to be set once. So I don't, I don't think that'll do exactly what we want it to do. Um, 
and die five. Cool. So now we got some dice. Uh, so now I can hold the dice. I can get their values. I can set. I'm going to move this one down just because it bothers me here. Right. So now we got a set of dice. So now I need a constructor. Right. The constructor's job is to give values to all of your attributes. Right. You can set them here. I, I dislike setting things here. I, the constructor's job is to do that, not inline. Some people disagree, and that's okay. So I'll make a constructor for, let's make this public here, right? Yahtzee dice. So we don't really need any values to create Yahtzee dice, right? So number of times rolled is zero. Look at that, that is a bad suggestion. I don't want to increase that by one. Now, when we create the dice, do we want them to already have been rolled once and roll all of them? Or do we want, wait for someone to click roll do you like being able to click roll before you see any numbers, or do you like having numbers already on the screen when your turn starts? Click and roll. Okay, so we should start zero roll here, and we'll set all the die values here. Die one value is zero. Like give it a default here. Right? That's that's the constructor's job. Look at that suggest. I love it. It's so good. And then all the holds should be false. Right? We're not holding until you tell me otherwise. Right? Okay, so we're good to go here. Now when we roll, so we can have a way to roll the dice, so public void roll, that's probably capital, right? So if our number of times rolled is three or more, we're done. It should only ever get to three, so we can say if my number of times rolled is greater than or equal to three, just in case we screw something up here, nothing happens. So really we kind of want the opposite. If it's less than three, then let's go do something here, right? Because I don't want to have to have if and an else if I don't need it. So if it's not, now I can go roll my dice. So to roll dice, we need some random values, right? So we have this random class, random equals a new random that we can use. I think we looked at this a while back with random numbers. So I can say, hey, if hold die one, well, if I'm holding it, don't do anything. So like if not holding the die, Right? Or you could name these roll die one, roll die two, and then you could check boxes to hold them and undo this, whatever makes more sense for you here. Um, I'm not super concerned one way or the other. I don't really like having to put a bunch of knots, but I'm gonna have to rename a bunch of things if I don't like it, so we'll just go with it. Right? So if we're not holding the die, then my die one value can equal random dot next int, and we want between one and seven because the max value is not returned exclusive of the upper bound because sure why whatever right uh no we want int 30 that was a bad suggestion int 32 next int why is it not next oh next by default okay so it's just next integers are the defaults here sure now this is going to feel a little bad to have the same code a bunch of times right because I'll say if not hold die two, if not hold die three, if not hold die four, it'd be nice if we could do something and not have a bunch of them out here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, equals, thank you. I think the plus equals was a bad suggestion. Um, yeah, definitely want to set it, not add to it, because that'll be bad if we just keep rolling mm -hmm. and keep going up. So we can copy paste this and do a bunch of like five times here, right? Die two and die two, this'll work. Or we could put them in some sort of list, right? Would be nice to do that instead of having the same code more than once. Yeah, that, that sounds bad, right? Okay, so let's 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 forget that for a minute here. So if I need a way to store all these things in a list, we can put them all in a list, right? I don't need to make it a public list if I don't want to, right? Because if we're returning a list, someone has access to change the values inside the list, we'd have to return clones of the list and all sorts of other things here. So we could just add a private value, right? So private list of int here to be our dice values. Uh, what does it want? No. All right. So then we'll add our list of dice values. Dice values. Oh, that's right. It should not be the new list here. That's what I'm looking for. Equals a new list of ints. Sure, and then we need a list of booleans to know if we should roll or not. Private list of bool hold values, sure. My hold values 
There's a new list of bool. Okay, you can do that. Now, if I have my list of dice values. Someone has a question. Oh, yeah. I was just wondering, because um, I use array, uh, arrays instead of lists, do you have, like, do you think there's any one that is, like, better to use than the other, or do, would I know where work? I just don't like arrays. You just don't like arrays. Yeah, I prefer lists. So arrays are slightly faster because they're not a class. You don't have all the over, extra overhead. Mm -hmm. um, lists give you more features and functionality. So they're, they're ever so slightly slower. You can organize them. You can sort both. Uh, they're both sortable. With this one, though, you can do dot group by dot. Yeah, we got all the fun link stuff. Yeah, we'll look at that in a little while. Pre I think so. Yeah, it should be. Thank you for checking. Um, forgetting that would be sad. <laughs> I think I made no promises that the recording works, right? And I said, your best bet is to come in person, but I'll try. Um, one time I was on mute for like the first 15 minutes because I checked this mute button for reasons. Um, it's easier when I'm not streaming. I used to stream at the same time to Twitch because Twitch is fun. Um, but then like I have to mute stuff on break, and I think that's why I forgot because we're on break, and I didn't want like all the chatter to go on the stream. Um, I do miss Twitch, though. Twitch was fun. So if we want, we can store this list of dice values here then, right? And then really we know what those values are, right? It's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, this is it, five zeros. Uh, I don't need new that, what am I doing? New list, Int. okay, I still needed that, sure. We can give it that, and then this one would be all my falses. False, 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 and false. Okay, we could do that. Now I don't need to set all of these ones here, right? Which is nice. And then if these are private sets anyway, these can be expression-backed properties, right? So this is gonna be my dice values index of zero. Right Now it's a public git, looks like a public git property. I already had a private set and we're gonna change this directly. So we can just go and give these values back out now. Oops, right. Right, for one, two, three, and four. Right, same with the holds. Now the holds though, if I wanna set them, get to be a little trickier. We could write get and set methods to deal with these. Um, We've got some options here. Because um, we can't do the expression back property, right? We'd have to have the full get and set where we define them. But we could, right? So that get is gonna be, what is it here? How do we do the syntax? Get, oh, I'm gonna have to copy off of it somewhere. Fix my formatting. No, get uh, hold values index of zero. What is it here? I should just go look. We, I got the book open here. This is not the kind of thing I remember off the top of my head. Where did we do that? It was information hiding, right? We built a prop property. Where did it go? It wasn't that one. We did the expressions. No, wasn't it in hiding? Property, oh, it was properties. Public float with git. Bool, get return. If I miss, if I use the return keyword, it would it would work here, right? Okay, and then set is going to be hold values of zero equals the value. Goodness, does that format any better? Okay, that's a little tedious here, but that's okay. We can work with that. Um, of one and one. One. All right, I didn't copy enough of the parentheses, the curly braces. All right, does this look any better at all? Or is this uglier now? Do you add more lines of code? Yeah. But now my roll is going to be a lot easier. So we win, right? All that to make roll easier. All right, so for index is zero. Index is less than five. 
Okay, index plus plus. Probably should go off the length of something, but this should be fine. So if my hold values at the index, if not, oops, not the hold values at index, right? If we're not holding, then I can take my dice values at the index, random next, one to seven. This is totally better than what I was gonna copy paste this five times, right? I don't know, maybe you like this, maybe not. Okay. We all right so far? So now we can roll. Oh, but we should, if we roll then, right, take our number of times rolled, plus plus. Now we rolled. Now making a new random every time might not be great. We might just want random once at the class level. When we make a set of dice, we could do that. Um, it's probably a little bit better here if we do it once. So let's do, uh, we want this one up here. Make that a private random. That we've only initialized once every time we make the dice instead of three, three times every time we roll. Probably slightly better. Right? Otherwise, it's doing more work than it needs to to make a new instance of random every time. Um, all right, cool. So now we can roll our dice. We can get the values of the dice. All that for dice. Gets and sets. All right, now we can make our, what, what should we do next? The player, because the player will use dice or each turn or maybe the scorecard or we've got some options here. Should we do the scorecard next? The Yahtzee scorecard. It's a little silly because in the Yahtzee project, but I don't know if just calling it dice makes sense versus scorecard. I'll just make that public. Now, to make a scorecard, right, we're sort of going to abuse this. We can use it to track our scores, and we can use it to show all the potential scores. Right? It can it can store values. Right? We can kind of do double duty with it, and it can show me potential values. Right? We could probably do that. Make it do both. Right? Or maybe we, we separate that out and have potential scores from something. We could do it either way. Right? Either the dice could give us potential scores, and we just store them in the, in the scorecard here. Right? That's, one, that's one way to go about it, um, if we scored it or not. How about that? So we'll have a public int uh, nullable int, right? Because if you haven't scored it yet, it should be null. But if you have scored, you could possibly score a zero. So zero is not really a good thing to know if I haven't scored it yet. So the ones score. Right. How do we make this uh, just easy gets and sets? So the twos score, right? Threes, fours, five, sixes. So twos, three score, four score and seven years. No, four score and how many years? It's a bad joke, sorry. Four score and seven. Four score and seven, okay. I don't know why that's in my head. Fives, score, sixes, score. Okay, that's our top section here, right? And then we'll have an int for upper bonus, right? That can be an expression back to property. That's pretty quick to calculate, right? So it's the sum of the upper if it's 63 or more, you get a bonus of, is it 25? 35. 35, thank you. See, I don't remember all of it here. So if all of these added together is greater than 63, which is three for each of them for some reason, that's how the math works out here, right? then we'll get the bonus. We can do that. So if something is true, so we're going to use the fun little ternary expression, right? So uh, we want ones score um, value no goodness dot value this is going to look really ugly if those are nullable aren't they hmm i want to just sum them all together here yeah yeah i don't think we want to initialize the null so we can make this look a little ugly it'll be okay so if this one dot has value, oh goodness. We're gonna do a bunch of ternaries inside of ternaries. And so, oh man, this is gonna be gross, but that's okay, right? Plus the two score has value. It won't be too bad once we copy paste it all in here, right? Plus, 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 oops, I think I lost one there. That's all right. Plus, plus, 
two score, two, three score, threes score. There it is. Fours score, fives score, and sixes score. Sixes score. If we have a value, do I have to put that in parentheses? Really? I don't think I need to. Operator cannot be applied. Plus. 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 Plus that. Plus that. Aha! I guess we needed the parentheses. Two score. Three score, four score, five score, six is score. All, right. All those values added together then, question mark, uh, or no, like greater than or equal to 63, question mark, 35, colon zero. Look at that, that wasn't too terrible, right? It's not the worst code you've seen. It makes sense what we're doing. All of this to save this being a method, I guess. So it could be an expression back property, but it's fun this way. Now, this is a little ugly here to have these magic numbers, right? We probably should do something about that. Right, that's kind of bad to have here. So we could have a, you know, a private static, I don't know, ones, uh, upper bonus, int upper bonus, 60, uh, 35 points. Right, so then we can get the upper bonus. And if you want it to be even cooler, right, static int upper score min to get bonus, 63, right? Hey, the computer's typing the code, typing the code for us most of the time, right? That, that's one of the worst ternaries I've seen. It's okay. Put all that in one more set of parentheses just to be explicit here. So if that's all greater than my upper score min to get bonus, I get the upper bonus, otherwise zero. You look like you're unhappy with my code. <laughs> that's all right, I'm unhappy too. It's not the prettiest thing I've ever done. But we're using all these fun features now, right? That's the point, we just wanna use the fun stuff. So not having magic numbers is nice, right? Where you just have a, some number in your code somewhere without a name. You should always put a name to your numbers. So that's nice here. Right? Maybe we should do that with our dice too, with, it, with this being three, rolls three, like maybe this should be max rolls. In case you wanted to change your yacht, we could do that, right? We could have a private static int max rolls is three. Right? That's a fun way to do it. Now this should probably be what my dice values up size or length, right? Length. Count. Count. There we go, how many values I have. That's a little better. So again, avoiding those magic numbers. One to seven, I don't, maybe we can have dice minimum, dice maximum. That, that might get a little too extra at that point, right? That's that's where the, the balance here. Um, it's nice to follow these rules, but if they get ugly, they get ugly. It's not really worth it. All right, so now we got the upper bonus. Um, now we can do the lower section. So public int, now we have a three of a kind, a kind with gets and sets, I have a public int four of a kind, let's see. Four of a kind, okay. Um, we gotta look at the Yahtzee scorecard, where's the Yahtzee game? Yahtzee, free, what was the link here? It's in here somewhere, isn't it? I haven't pulled up yet here. Here it is. All right, three of a kind, four of a kind, full house. So full house, full house, and then small straight, large straight, right? Uh, small straight, large straight, small straight, large straight, and then we had chance and Yahtzee. Chance and Yahtzee, okay. Now we got all of those. Now, 
If you wanted to follow the same thing here, you could have the upper total, and you could have a lower total. I guess this one just has total, which is nice, right? They did an upper total, they didn't do a lower total. The actual Yahtzee game, if you play with the papers, they have an upper total and a lower total, and then the to grand total. This is fine, we can just go right to total. Right, uh, int treasure is git, that's a neat suggestion. Probably don't want that one. I don't know where these get fed from. Huh, none of those are helpful, that's all right. So public int, uh, you want just grand total? Total, we can just call it total. It's an expression back property is <laughs> all of this added together. Crap, I don't have to type that more than once. Right, that's, that's gonna be really obnoxious. So, um, let, let's add that int for upper total, or upper sum, right, I think is what that one called it here. And I can do this, right? That's just all of that. And now my code here for upper bonus gets a whole lot prettier, right? I can use that other property that I just have up here to get my upper bonus, right? It'll calculate all that for me. It's going a little long on that line here. Maybe, maybe I do bump it down one. Right, maybe we bump this one down one. Sure. All right, so now my total then will be the upper sum plus the upper bonus. Upper bonus plus all of these ones if they have values or not, right? So we'll just copy paste this. Now it's going to be three of a kind, has value, three of a kind value, four of a kind, four of a kind value, full house. Full house value, small straight, small straight value, large straight, large straight value, chance, chance value, and Yahtzee. What does it not like about these? Null check can be simplified. Oh, there we go. That's so much prettier. I forgot the null coalescence. Look at that, right? Get the value. If not, get a zero. That's so much better. I love that suggestion. I should have checked that earlier, right? Isn't that prettier? This is worth uh, erasing all these. Redoing all that work? That's okay. All right. Uh, parenthesis? Semicolon? There we go. All right, it doesn't like those, that's fine. We can we can get rid of those if we want. All right, so we should change that for all these ones too then, right? Because we want our code to be prettier. Totally worth it. Again, just syntax sugar here. Oh, I could I just let it accept, there we go. That's all I had to do was click here and tab. I was doing too much work again. And again, it doesn't like all the extra parentheses, that's fine, we can take those out. All right, so here's our total for our scorecard, right? This one just sort of works now, right? So now I can store values in the scorecard. They'll either be null or not, right? Probably wanna make a constructor. That's the last thing we're missing now, right? Is our constructor. So give all these things good values, right? Okay, sure, so let's make a constructor. Public Yahtzee scorecard. Now I'm going to set everything to null, right? So my one's score is null, two's score is null. Let's see if it picks it up here. Three's, three's score is null, four score is null, five score is null, six's score is null, three of a kind score, kind, no, three of a kind score, just three of a kind is null. Four of a kind, null, the full house is null, small straight is null. I think just typing out all this is the, the tedious piece here, right? Chance is null and Yahtzee's null. All right, awesome. Now we got our scorecard. So now we need a way to calculate possible scores or given a set of dice, figure out what their scores are. Should we add that to dice? Should dice be able to tell us scores? We can do that, right? So how about for dice then we add a method that gives you possible scores. So for the given set of dice here, whatever their values are, let's get their scores. Should be able to do that. 
this will be a little tricky, but it's okay. So this will be a public uh, Yahtzee scorecard. Get possible scores. Right? So we can make a new scorecard. So my score, Yahtzee scorecard scores equals a new Yahtzee scorecard. Now we need to go figure out our scores. So like all of the interesting work here will happen in dice because the dice should be able to tell us what their scores could be. That could happen here. Um, you could make a separate class for it. It's probably fine too. Um, I like it in here and that's probably fine. So now we need to see if they work or how we go do all this logic. Right now we've got this list of values. This list will be really helpful here in calculating all of our scores here. This will, this will be pretty useful. Now, other things we're going to have to do then is have a bunch of other helper methods because I don't want to have to do a, the same work twice. Right. So to find out your value of ones, you loop through your dice, see how many are ones, and multiply them by one. To find out your twos, you loop through your dice, see how many are twos, multiply that by two. And you get the count of how many times that one shows up. Right. It's probably what we did for yours. You can use some really cool link functions. I was actually going to wait on that until we get to, in the advanced section here, we get to lambda expressions. Once we get to lambda expressions and all this fun link stuff, we can go back and put all of that fun stuff and change it here in Yahtzee. So if you ask the chat chatbot here, uh, chat, umish chat, what is it? Umish GBT? GPT? UMGPT? There we go. It's a clever name for it. How do you get the Yahtzee scores in C sharp given five int values for the dice? See what it gives me. We'll try it and see. I'm guessing it's going to give us link stuff. And if you don't know how link works, you're going to get some garbage. I mean, it might not be garbage, but it only handles Yahtzee and handles, handles. Oh, wow. You should write your own logic for scores. Okay, sure. Dice values. Why is this, like, what even, why is it centered? That's awful. That's really sad, but sure. All right, so dice values, distinct count, is one. Do you know what distinct and count does? We could look that up. This isn't too bad. How about group by i, i count equals two, i any count equals two. Do you know what any of this is doing? Do you think it's a good idea to turn in code that you don't know what it does? <laughs> it's probably a bad idea. It probably works and we could write tests to make sure it works. But in general, that's a bad idea. Um, what is it here? This Torvald. Uh, this... Now, I'm not saying he is a good guy. He's got issues. Um, he's a bit of a brilliant jerk. And in general, I frown upon brilliant jerks. But he made it, makes a good point here. Um, commit. Oh, what was it? Wait. It was just in Twitter about this. Yeah, I think this was it. No, that was from 2015. Okay, he did it again. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this wasn't a full meltdown here. Um, where is it here? 2024. Is it this one? I think it was this one. Yeah. Where's the, the letter? Okay. No. This is worth it, I promise. Where is the letter? I'm, I'm amazed this is how like Linux functions with this. <clears throat> this is nuts. People use this garbage. <laughs> um, but sure, where's the, where's the real link here? Come on. Where's the whole thing? Anyway, this is the, the center of his message here. You copy the function without understanding why it does what it does, and as a result, your code is garbage. 
Again, it's a bit of a jerk. Again, I, I'm not saying this is good behavior, but this is an illustration of people copying code they don't understand. And this is someone from Google, apparently, trying to contribute to the Linux kernel code. These are smart people, right? So don't just copy paste things, right? That, that, that's, this is this whole rabbit trail we went down. So giving me things that you don't know what they do is probably not great. You can test it to make sure it does what it's supposed to do, but ideally you ought to be able to read the code and understand it. If you can't read it, we're gonna have some trouble, right? And it's fine, you're, you're not gonna lose points on it if you did it. I'm just saying in general, like if you can't follow the code, that, that's a bad sign, right? Don't use that code, that was all. Okay, so all of that to say, how do we get our scores here? So maybe we make a private int get score for value you know, um, number, given an int number, right? So to get the score for the number, let's loop through. So we'll have an int for sum, right? Um, starts off at zero, and for int i in dice values, uh, no, in dice values. If my die is equal to my number, we should return sum plus plus. Oh, sorry, for each. Now, if I want the number of the sum of ones, right, I'm counting one at a time, that's fine. The sum of twos, I should probably add two each time. The sum of threes, I should add three each time. So really, I can just add the number, right? So if I'm counting how the total value of sixes, every time I find a six, I should count six, right? Return the sum, okay? So to get the possible scores, scores.1's value is gonna equal my get score for number one, right? Scores.2's score will get score for number two. Scores.3's score, let's get score for number three. I love this, scores.4's score, this isn't even copilot. I don't know what this is here. Four score. Get number for four. Scores dot five score. Get score for number five. And scores dot six score. Get score for six. Right? That same function works for all of those at the top. Right? Because it just checks how many times it finds that number, adds it together. That was pretty cool. Right? And eventually, I want that to stop being red, so I'll return scores here. Okay, now that red goes away. So we did the upper section, now we do the lower section. So we have to find three of a kind, four of a kind, right? And we have to find full house, straights, chance, and Yahtzee, okay? So how about we make a private uh, list of int here. Again, this is one approach. I've done this several times before, so this is one I'm familiar with. And I like not just copy pasting from the chat bot because it probably will work. But again, like if we understand what we're doing, that's the, the, the one of the points of practice here. Um, so we'll call this git, um, what do I want here? So this is die value occurrences, occurrences, occurrences. Uh, get die value occurrences. How about that? So let's make a list of six values here, and every time a one shows up, I'll count it. Every time a two shows up, I'll count it. Every time a three shows up, I'll count it. Every time a four shows up, I'll count it. Right? So I'm going to make a list of int here uh, for die occurrences or value occurrences equals a new list of ints. And for now, they're all going to be zeros, right? Because I haven't counted any of them yet. There's one, two, three four, five. Now, I could do six, and that's fine here, but if I do seven, I'll have indexes zero through six, which is gonna be really nice, and then I can cheat. I don't have to like subtract one to find the value for the index. Like, I'll just ignore the zero, and then look at index one for how many times the one showed up, the index two, how many times the two showed up, how many times the three showed up, on and on and on and on, right? Just lets me cheat here. Dice value occurrences, okay? And then four, again, just looping through here, like we did for this one for each die in dice values here. I'm gonna take my dice value occurrences at the die value and add one to it. 
right? So this list here is all zeros to start. Whatever that value of the die is, add one to. Because I now I've counted that face value, that die value has occurred. Right, so if I have one, two, three, four, five, I'll get a one here, a one here, a one here, a one here, and a one here. If I have five sixes, I should have a five here when I'm done. Right? That's all. So this will count those occurrences for me. Format. Oh, we got to return that. Return dice value occurrences. Now will you format? It's not formatting my spaces here. I'm sad. That's all right. Just move those two. Okay. So I can get the dice value occurrences. Right? Does that one make sense? You got to stop me. I've had a lot of coffee today. So just holler. All right. So to find out my three of a kind score, so my scores dot three of a kind will equal either zero or was it twenty five? No, no. I'm sorry. That's the that's gonna be the sum of the dice. Right. I think it's thirty. I'm pretty sure. You're... So small small straights. Oh, small straights thirty, large straights forty. Yeah, so the three of a kind, you get the sum of all your dice. So we probably need one more sum. So private int sum of all dice. Four of a kind. Right? Oh, yeah, three of a kind, four of a kind. So it'll be my dice values dot sum. Right? Sum will sum a bunch of int values. And if you didn't know sum, that's okay. We could do a loop, do it ourselves here. But this is a pretty quick built in, give you the sum of a list here. Okay, and save me from having to rewrite this more than once here. That's fine. So if I have a three of a kind, I need to find out how do I know if I have a three of a kind or not. So I want to check and see if my get uh, die value occurrences dot uh, contains three. So if that contains the number three here, one of those dice values has showed up three times, right? So if that contains a three, then it will equal my sum of dice values. Otherwise it's zero. Does that one make sense? Okay. See, okay, get all the dice value occurrences. If it has a three, you get the sum of all your dice. If not, it's zero. We do the same for our four of a kinds score. Oh, that's not three score, that's three of a kind. Three of a kind, there we go. This will be four of a kind. If we have a four in there, then we get the sum of all the dice, right? What was next on the scorecard? Our full house. All right, so full house then, scores.fullhouse will equal, well, I want to get the die value occurrences again here. Die value occurrences dot contains two and it contains a three. If I have a two of a kind and a three of a kind, that's a full house, right? Then that's 25 points for a full house, right? If not zero, right? Where did that logic break though? Because if you have three, three times, it would give you an occurrence of three twice and it would give you an occurrence of three, three times. No, so because I'm counting here, how many they occurred, the value in three will, uh, will be a three. So this, the sum of all of this will be five because I have five dice right. Right, in here. Yep. Yeah, you got to be careful um, with that. And then a full house means you also have a three of a kind. Right. So when you look at these possible scores, you, they can score different ways. A four of a kind technically is a three of a kind as well. So if you look at the rules here, if you have a four of a kind, you should be able to score that as a four of a kind. Or I'm sorry, as a three of a kind if you want because you have at least three. That gets to be a little bit messy here. Um, but that's okay, we can do that too. Um, we could account for that if we wanted. So we could say, um, or contains four. Oh, this is getting really ugly here. Or contains four. And really at that point, we can also check for five. Or contains five, because that's also a four of a three of a kind. So it could also be a five of a kind. Ugh, that gets a little bit ugly, but that's okay. Um, not the end of the world here. It's a little bit sad, but that's okay. That, that's the technique. If you missed that, don't don't sweat it. It's okay. You could just pretend three of a kind is only a three of a kind, not three or more. 
perfectly fine. No worries. Uh, but I think that's a little more proper when we when we play the game according to the rules. Okay. Now the small straight and large straight. So the straights are a little bit trickier, right? So scores dot uh, small straight. That's if I have one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, or three, four, five, six, right? So a couple ways of looking at that. We could use our dice value occurrences and say, hey, are the first four have a value, or the middle four have a value, or the top four have a value, not zeros. We could do that if we wanted. This is going to be a little bit ugly, um, probably OK. Um, we could write it the long way. I, I think if we asked for, did it give us a straight here? It didn't give us a straight. So let's look at how do we do, how do you check for a small straight? See if this can give us some help here, some starter code. So once it's sorted, then we can go through and see if our values match. Oh, that's not terrible, but it's not great here. So starting at zero up to the length minus three, because there's three more dice we have to check in here. Uh, three more values we have to find, right? So if the first one matches the next one, minus one, and the next one matches the second die minus two, and the next one matches the next die minus three, Right, so once we put the dice in sorted order, we can figure out if we have a small straight or not. That's not terrible. Right? We could do that. Should we just do that one? Okay, let's do that one. So small straight then, we need, probably this should be a function here then, right? So private pool has small straight. And then we should put in here, uh, we asked ChatGPT, what do we ask it here? How to check for small straight. I, the whole conversation will be better, but this, is, this will be fine here. Um, we can return small straight. That's, I don't like that. It's, has is a better word here. Has small straight. There we go. Now dice values dot count. Is that going to be right? But really, we want to start at one, right? Because we, we uh, oh no, no, zero is fine. Uh, it's the other ones, the occurrences. Yeah, so our dice values, but well, we got to sort it first, right? Now, calling sort on my dice values might mix up what's happening here, right? Because sort will sort them in place. So if I'm showing my dice and I have like a six and a two and a three and a one, and I go sort them, and I'm trying to tie my images to those dice values, weird things might happen. So we want to be a little bit careful here of changing those values directly, right? It might be better to make a new list to work on, right, that we can then sort. So my dice values, um, so I always say I have an int, you can even do an int array, right, like they have dice values equals dice values dot, uh, to array, to array, dot sort. Can I do that, dot sort? No, nope. why is it not letting me do that? Hang on, where's my, array dot sort, okay. So I want array dot sort, dot sort, dice values, to array. Now I need this like uh, sorted dice values, how about that? Make that a new, and I don't need to call sort anymore. And I'm not going to use dice values. I'm going to use my sorted dice values. And I'm going to replace all of that. Ugh, that's annoying. But that's fine. We'll get there. Sorted dice values, sorted dice values, sorted dice values. Now, now we can go back to length here, because an array will have that. What's it not like here? Can't enter void int. Oh, goodness. OK, uh, so we want. Die value. Oh, okay, so we want die one, die one value, die two value, die three value, 
by four value, by five value. Right. So we'll make an array out of our values and then go sort them. How about that? Because that way we're not going to change the values behind the scenes. We don't want to mess up that mapping to our pictures or change that on our users and, and sort it on them here. Because um, that'll mess everything up with our which one we're, we're tracking that we're holding and not. Right. So we can do our, our small straight. Right. We got that from ChatGPT mostly. Right. That's probably fine. So if we have a small straight, then right, we'll equal. Uh, has small straight. If we do, that's what, 30 points? Otherwise, zero. Has small straight, that's a function call, right? And then large straight, again, we'll get the same idea here. So we can do has large straight. Has a large straight. Now, having the same code twice feels bad, right? Should we get a. Oh, that's not even the sort. We didn't even sort it yet, right? We needed arrays.sort on that. Raise dot sort sort the sorted dice values. Is it not arrays? Array? Array dot sort. That's an important step. I have the same thing twice, I feel bad. Right? So let's extract that. Let's go extract local function method. I think it does the same thing. That's fine. So this will be get sorted. Dice values, right? And then we can use that again here. All right, and then has large straight. Now this one will go length minus two, right? We got to check one more. Uh, I'm sorry, no, length minus four. We have one less. Because with the large straight, you need all five of your numbers. And you, so we're only going to start at are actually that's just once right there's only two things to check so we want to check starting at zero okay, is this doing what i expect it to do checking it's not length is that it this will check the first die the second die yeah because it's a small straight so length is five this only runs twice which is fine. Uh, so this one only needs to run once. So we don't even have to do any of this, right? We can just return then my sorted dice value of zero matches one, and one matches two, and two matches three, minus three, and uh, no, those are all zeros here. Sorry, zero, 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 one, two, three, four, five. One, two, oh, no, I can't count because this one is the fifth one. Matches one, two, three, and four. Four minus four. Don't need any of that nonsense. Uh, that one. Right, so once we get the sorted values, we'll check, hey, does the first value match the next value minus one? If it's a one, two, three, four, five, or a two, three, four, five, six, this should still be true, right? So this one is a big, ugly loop, but it really only runs twice. So we haven't really saved a whole lot of code here, right? Because length is five, five minus three is two, it's around at zero and one, that's all. Um, you okay with that? And scores dot large straight will equal has large straight no nope, large that's 40 points otherwise zero right is it 40 I forget that's probably close all right so those are the straights then we're getting there and then chance and Yahtzee okay so chance is just scores dot chance is equal to sum of all dice was that this property just the sum of all the dice, and scores.yahtzee, then will equal, if we have a five of a kind, that's worth 50 points, otherwise it's zero. Again, maybe we, we change this here, we should probably put in some hard-coded values for these, right? That's probably prettier, right? So max rolls, private, static, int. Now this feels funny to be part of dice though, doesn't it? Shouldn't that be part of like the scorecard? 
feel like that should go in the scorecard. Then we have a public static int. Uh, what is this? A small straight score. Straight score is 30. And a large straight score and a Yahtzee score. Large straight score is 40. Yahtzee score is 50. Does that feel better to go here? I like that here better. So where do we go for this? So that'll be the Yahtzee scorecard dot small straight score. And then the large straight score and the Yahtzee score. Again, optional, just, just ways to clean this up so that we don't have all these magic numbers out here everywhere. Uh, oh, we should do a full house score too. Full house score. Let's go add that one. Uh, that one was 25, right? 25, 30, 40, 50? That's probably what that is. Are we okay so far? Now, what gets weird about this though is trying to test this out. How do we know if our get possible scores things work? Right, because these are all private methods. It's gonna be kind of hard to test all those Right? If we can only roll the dice. If we don't have these as gets here, we're going to run into some trouble. Right, Because I can't just go give it some values and say, here's your five values here. Go tell me what scores you get. That is one downside of putting it here. This gets to be a little bit trickier. Um, I like the idea that we can ask the dice for the scores, though. Right, And later in our UI, we can say, if my player's scorecard has null value, go show the dice value. If it has a value, just show that and don't let them score it. Right? So this like being null or not in the scorecard kind of does double duty for us of whether or not they've scored it. So we can key this off for turning the buttons on and off and for displaying possible scores or not. That can do double duty for us. All right, I got a little after seven already. Should we take a break and come back in 10 minutes? All right, when we come back in 10 minutes, I'll start another recording after that.